In today's video, I'm going over the basics of networking, everything you need to know to get started. So I'm going to be breaking down this tutorial into four sections and I'm going to be going pretty fast. So please uh, pause and play as needed. Uh, number one, I'm going to be going over IP addresses and also the tools that you use to access them. And then I'm going to go over subnets and then I'm going over default gateway and routers. And then finally wrapping things up with DNSs. So those are the four topics I will be talking about today and going into them uh, very quickly. So uh, I actually did a very long live stream when I actually recorded this. So this was actually done on the live stream. Uh, however, I chopped up all the parts and uh, about 50 people were on it, kind of giving feedback as I was going along. And then I did these recordings and then, then condensed it down into these 10 minute sections. Now, I had a lot of good banter back and forth during that live stream. However, it's two and a half hours long. So during that live stream, I go more in depth into like subnetting and other uh, more complex issues that arise from these. But for today's video, this is really meant for a, a complete amateur or beginner in networking that doesn't really understand many concepts of networking really to get started because most people out there do too deep of a dive in their tutorial. And this is really meant to be a 10 minute, hey, your dad could take this tutorial, go ahead, power through it in 10 minutes and then have at least a basic understanding of how networking works on computers. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and start going. And I'm gonna start off with IP tools. So to actually find out all the different types of IP addresses, gateways, all your network information is done with IPA or IP address. IP space A is actually the short for the actual pulling this command up that is run. Um, there is also IF config, like let's say you're on an Ubuntu box. I believe this is built in by default. If not, the actual package name is net-tools, like this. And that is the actual package name to get IF config. I personally like IF config a little bit better than IP space address, just because it lays it out in a far more intuitive method has better spacing and it's far easier to read. So the actual IP address is shown here. Now this does look different between the IF config and IP space A as shown. Um, now I'm actually gonna show IP config on Windows boxes, which is also very important to know. Here is an actual IP config that you'd see in a Windows box. It's a little bit different as you see on this one. Um, I kind of like the layout of the IP config from a command line on a Windows box. You can actually see the IP address, subnet, all this laid out pretty easily. And I do enjoy this actual layout. However, uh, there's not nearly as much custom customizability as you get in Linux. But this is how it would look on a Windows box. And now you kind of see the differences between all the tools that you'll access to find network information on your computer. This command actually is gonna give you the basis of what you need to know as far as IP addresses are concerned. Uh, when you look at an IP space A command, it is a little bit bunched together. I don't particularly like this command because it doesn't show your gateway and also it kind of lumps in your actual IP address. But there's two things I wanna show you here. LO's loopback and can be safely ignored. This is for local host and local calls actual other address is this thing right here. This can be different on each machine. Yours is probably not EMP 6 SO. It's probably gonna be like ETH zero or something of that nature. With that said, actual IP or the IP address of this machine, which is an actual numerical digit uh, assigned to it is gonna be this number, the INET. This right here is what the actual IP is of the machine. Um, it's important to know that's just associated with this particular machine, not the entire network. Also not like your router or external address. Your external address is going to be something completely different. Uh, as far as the subnet and other things, we're going to get into this portion of it. But for this, I just want to talk about the physical address of your machine. Uh, other things to note is the, uh, Mac address, otherwise known as the physical address 
and that is actually right here above it, the link ether. These are the two things that you need to know for the actual specific address of your machine. This is super important that everything is unique. Your regular IP address may change depending on what uh, is going on with your system. With that said, your physical address or MAC address will not change in almost any circumstance. So as far as subnets goes, let's go ahead and pull our ifconfig command. From here, we can see that our net mask is this 255.255.255.0. This is our subnet. Net mask and subnet are the same thing. Uh, this allows 254 computers on your local network. That subnet is basically allowing anything on it to talk to each other without going through a gateway. So it doesn't actually need to talk to the gateway to talk to each other. This is really important, especially when you're setting up in offline routers and other networking equipment, as you don't even need to assign the actual gateway of a computer. Let's say you have a laptop. I've used this many times where I'll take that laptop, assign a static IP to it, which static IP means the IP never changes. It's always that same and assign it something on its local subnet that isn't the same IP as it. And then I can easily take that laptop remote into it without actually uh, needing to set any networking equipment up, which is awesome. So think of subnets as just easy ways for it to talk to each other without having to go through a router or a gateway. Um, with that said, that is the most standard subnet that you'll see in LANs uh, or local area networks. So with that said, this is ifconfigs reading and also Windows is very much the same as you've seen in its readouts. It'll just be calling it a gateway or call it a subnet instead of a net mask and that would be showing the same thing. But when you do IP space A, you'll notice there is not a net mask or a subnet anywhere on here. It actually does it shorthand in this dash 24. This dash 24 is easily done from this cheat sheet right here when you're actually setting static IPs, the dash 24 is key to know. That is mostly what you're setting when you're trying to do a subnet of 255.255.255.0. Did I just do too many 255s there? I don't know, note. Might've been too many 255s. All right, continuing on. And also the other top two addresses here, dash 30, and also not on here is dash 32, which assigns one IP address. Um, these are used mainly when you're doing WAN IPs or wide area networks. These are your external IPs assigned by your internet provider. So usually they will give you a dash 30 or a dash 32. In most instances for residential, most businesses are actually a dash 30 depending on how many static IPs that specific internet provider gives you. And that is subnetting broken down in a short time span. So we need to talk about gateways real fast and networking. When you have a gateway, it's super important to know in Linux, it doesn't actually show it when you run like ifconfig or if you do an IPA. You just don't see your gateway and the gateway is very important because that is basically your router otherwise known as a gateway. So let's say you hook up a computer to a network. Well, that computer has to go to a router or a gateway, as we're gonna call it now, and then it goes through that gateway or a router and out to the internet. So that is super important to know, but if you ever wanted to know, hey, what's the IP address of my router? Well, that's very easy to do. IP route will actually give you the route your computer takes out to the network. So in this example, you can see up here 69.1, is our gateway that is technically the router i am using so let's say i needed to log into this router i would actually just pull up my browser and type in this address so i would just do 192.168.1 and sign in there we go that is my actual router so i can actually sign in here and go from here so uh, if you ever need to know your writer's, router's IP and it's not the dot one, there you go. But 
Just think of gateway as the router and remember the IP space route command for Linux because that is how you would find the gateway as it's not the default. Now on Windows, this is not the case. The actual default gateway is actually spelled out right here. And when you do an IP config space dash all, um, regular IP config also shows it. That is IP gateways or the gateways in networking broken down simplistically. So the last thing we need to know about the basics of networking is DNS, which is uh, the way to resolve domain names on your network. You typically set this up when you either set up your DHCP server or your static IP. So whichever one is handling that will actually give you this DNS server. And what that DNS server does is again, it resolves names to IP addresses. So when you go to Google, it will actually resolve that. Uh, a good example of this is let's just ping Google right now. You'll see the actual IP address it is pulling. It is pulling, hey, their, their DFW server from that Google, I, or that Google domain name. My DNS server is the one that actually picks out that IP and says, hey, this is how you communicate back and forth really important to know because that's going to add latency and other things um, when you pick a poor DNS server. So uh, one thing to note here is don't leave your DNS server the stock from your internet provider. I like to go ahead and pick a more trusted solution like Level 3 or Cloudflare is a really good one that's come in the market and has fantastic DNS servers. Um, you can choose whichever one's fast for you. I highly recommend doing a benchmark if you're on Windows. Go to GRC and run the benchmark tool there, um, or you could use Namebench um, from the AUR. It is also available for Debian and other packages. Um, so you can easily benchmark your DNS and pick which one's better for you. However, uh, I highly recommend Level 3, OpenDNS, uh, Google DNS, and also Cloudflare. Those are kind of my go-to DNS servers. So really important to know and just fantastic. So there we go guys, I went ahead and condensed all this down. I really hope you like these edits. If you don't like these edits, I will link uh, above right here, somewhere, and there'll be a little card, you click on that, it'll actually take you to the two hour live stream. That two hour live stream is pretty darn involved and I go over a whole range of topics and I do deviate at times from networking, so don't think that you're gonna be watching just that. However, there's still a lot of good content that I actually cut to kind of have this condensed uh, form because I really like my videos to give as much information as quickly and as concisely as possible without droning on because there's nothing that I hate more when I watch YouTube videos is when someone just sits there and kind of stretches out the clock so they can get a higher audience retention or some BS. Uh, I don't like that. I like to just hit and give you all the material all at once and then you can pause, play as needed. Uh, but with that said, I really hope you enjoy this. And if you need a more in-depth, you can follow that live stream. Or if there's something I missed that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if I had to pick one section that I really wish I spent like had more like 10 to 20 minutes to go over, it'd be subnetting. Subnetting is a far more complex subject than how I broke it down in that short two minute segment but I did it in that method because that basic understanding will get you by when configuring routers and, and basic networking things. Um, but with that said, guys, let me know how I did on this video, if you thought it was good or if I missed anything. And if you like to see videos like this, consider going over to Patreon if you have a couple bucks and signing up, that would make a world of difference and help me make more videos like this one. And with that said, I will see you on the next video.